Hey, this is a heads up. Before we get started, this video will have a lot of on-screen blinking, flashing, strobing lights. Please do not watch if that's going to be an issue for you, okay? Thanks. Hi, my name is Jeremy. This is Red Beans Recording, and today we're talking about the Sleepy Circuits Hypno. This is a digital two-oscillator video synthesis module that can also run standalone. You see this little case it has right here? So cute. It's a little hypnosis module. In addition to all of that, the Hypno's front USB port supports USB 2.0 UVC compliant devices, which means that you can plug in a number of cameras and capture cards into the front USB via a micro USB, a USB adapter, and uh, use the HDMI and the thing here, and then it looks like this. I know lots of you are into hypnosis, so we're going to go over this today. We're going to talk about its features. I'm going to show you some patches, and we're going to talk about why it's so cool to have a little standalone video synthesizer that you can integrate into Eurorack. Here's some of the stuff that we'll see in here along the way. So video synthesis is one of those things that's been kind of arcane and kind of really expensive to get into. And while the Hypno, I think it's priced around 600 US dollars, isn't cheap, when you compare it to something like a full case of LZX gear, you start to realize just how much value they pack into this little thing. Hey, this is Future Jeremy. I just wanted to kind of butt in a little quickly about price for this thing, because I know people are going to, you know, make comments about it. And I, you know, I agree, it's not cheap. $600 isn't something that many people have just lying around. But comparatively, when you're talking about hardware Eurorack video synthesis, there's really only one game in town, and that's LZX. Um, I love LZX. I think they're an amazing company based out of Portland. But like, the functionality that you get with the Hypno versus having to build your own LZX system is insane. I mean, like, I just kind of threw this together, knowing some of the features that the LZX modules have, and some of the features that the Hypno has. And um, you know, I'm at about five thousand uh, dollars real quick if I try to build an LZX system. The other thing to keep in mind is that there's a different voltage standard for LZX gear when it comes to modulation. I believe LZX runs at one volt, uh, positive and negative one volt in some cases, while regular Eurorack runs at plus and minus five volts. So if you decided to go for the LZX stuff, you're going to need to have things that translate between normal Eurorack uh, values and, uh, and LZX values or video values. Just a little future Jeremy button in here letting you know that the price is pretty good for what you get. So, what's going on here? Well, there are two oscillators. One oscillator, two oscillators. You have controls over the zoom of those oscillators. You have control over the polarization of those oscillators. Each oscillator can be a number of shapes. Go back to lines for right now. And you have control over the feedback. So what you'll see now is that there's feedback, which is a huge part of video synthesis. It's a really, really fun part of it. Um, normally you would have to point a camera at like a CRT to get this kind of thing, or you know, use the memory palettes from LZX, but this does it for you. So there's two different feedback modes. You can see going on crazy there. This changes the hue relationship between the two oscillators, and you can actually set those independently. Uh, we talked about polarization, and obviously you can rotate these. I should mention that, yes, it is Eurorack compatible. We have CV inputs right here, and we will be using the Hydrosynth here to create patches that interact with this in a really, really pleasing way. Over here, you have a full HDMI out, power via USB, um, composite out, 
And um, you can do video out over USB as well, which is pretty nifty. This middle knob here is the gain knob. You can see that we are going from a black all the way to like this kind of like almost pixelated gain there because we're pumping up the gain. And then we already talked about hue. So we have a couple different feedback modes we can switch between, which is really cool. This one can get really glitchy. Ooh, yeah, baby. Ooh, this is not a video for people that have uh, possible epileptic issues. Each feedback mode offers sort of like a different transfer between the two oscillators. They will do like uh, different transfer modes to them. So they will interact in different ways, subtract from each other and stuff like that, which is really, really cool. This is all math, by the way. It's all different kinds of math that are interacting with each other. Let's turn our gain over to here. Polarization and oscillator shape is kind of cool. And then the zoom of the oscillator. Ooh, yeah. So there are some things hidden under the hood here um, in terms of affecting the oscillators and the, the feedback mode in the middle. When you hold down one of these buttons, you get access to a series of other controls that are hidden in there. So let's experiment with those real quick. Let's enter into page A for oscillator A by holding down the oscillator button here. Cool. So this becomes drift. We can get a little bit of drift. Pot five becomes rotation. So we're just going to introduce some interesting movement to this. Let's do the same to this one over here. You can fractalize the oscillators here. The more you turn this up, the more of a fractal it becomes. And you can oscillate the fractal with this knob. I like to do just a little bit of movement like that. We'll get into patching the oscillators into each other in a second, but I want to go over to oscillator B and do something similar. I want this to be real trippy. Cool. Let's adjust the zoom of these. There we go. That's pretty cool. When you're holding down this, you can adjust the hue and saturation of each oscillator. And I'll show you what's cool about this besides getting really brilliant colors in a second. Let's make this blue. Mm. Then this knob here controls the relationship between those hues that you've picked. I'm starting to get really trippy now, which is nice. We can actually reframe the feedback. So we're seeing feedback. That's what that stuff is that's sort of filling in the gaps there fractally. So if we hold down the middle button, we can rotate the feedback, which is very, very trippy as hell. <laughs> we can have the feedback drift We can X and Y reposition the feedback as well. Let's go ahead and change our hue. Now, when we start experimenting with different transfer modes or different feedback modes, we're going to get different effects in this, which is damn cool. <laughs> this one's cool because it sort of like cuts out the other ones. So now we can mess around with things like our shapes. See if there's another place in the shape stuff we want. We can mess around with our hue. And we can mess around with our zooming to see if there's a place in here that this is better suited for zooming. Ooh, I love you. That's what it's saying. I love you. Things get kind of interesting when you put it, the saturation of both oscillators down because you lose the sense of two oscillators separately working, and instead you just get this really trippy reverse and cutout mode that becomes just really wild. <laughs> you could basically create new shapes by changing the relationship between the two oscillators. And then if you go into your fractal mode again, you can really dial it. Let's go ahead and turn our saturation back up on both of them. Find a nice sweet spot. You see all that math happening? 
That's all this is. Complex interactions with math that we can actually see. There are so many little bots to find stuff happening. So in addition to all of that, you have the ability to patch oscillators and feedback into other things, just creating more complex relationships between things. So when you hold down one of these oscillators, you'll see lights that appear on your other two things here. So this is our mixer master section. This is oscillator B. You can see that oscillator A is already set to go into the master section as you would expect. Same thing with oscillator B going into the master section. If we take these off, we take off our oscillators to the master section. Let's put one back. Let's take oscillator B and feed it into oscillator A. So now we get a much different result as opposed to having them both independently run. Let's run the master into oscillator B. Once you start running the master into things, you end up getting like some interesting noise and we can make it very noisy and fractally, which is neat. The more that you patch things into other things, the noisier that it gets. But again, there's all kinds of weird little sweet spots depending on how you patch this. And that's just insane. <laughs> Let's see what happens when we unpatch some of this stuff. Do you like things that undulate? I do. I'm a big fan of things that undulate. So obviously uh, we have the ability to create um, these pretty trippy, wonderful Winamp mm, <laughs> visualizer things. Um, so that would be fun unto itself. But obviously the real fun comes when you start to patch into it and have it react to things that you're doing. So that's what we're going to do now. I have the hydrosynth here. And to start off, I'm going to have this randomized patch that the hydrosynth created for me. I'm going to plug it into here and we're going to see what we can get. The hydrosynth has the ability to send modulation from anything inside of it into an external source. Now, since this patch was randomized, I don't know what we're going to get, but we're going to take mod one and two, and we're going to put it into the zoomy part here. And we're going to check our mod matrix and see what we can do. Let's get our shapes aligned. So this is like a uh, little square shape. You can hear LFO5 working on there. A little goes a long way when it comes to modulation. And because this is bipolar, it's important to uh, consider like negative modulation that you're doing as well. Let's try a different LFO. Let's work our way back. Since these are zooms, if you zoom in too far, you will um, uh, make the picture disappear. Let's go ahead and slow our LFOs down and change them to something a bit more obvious. Let's go ahead and just do mod two into this part right here. Let's get ourselves a transfer mode that makes it disappear at 12 o'clock. Let's go into our, um, our mod matrix again here, and let's go ahead and change this to envelope one. And we'll change this to envelope two. And we're going out of mod two. So this is the one we're dealing with. That's pretty cool. Oh, hell yeah. That's a wavy snake, friends. So now pitch is set to our zoom. So the higher the pitch, the lower the pitch, we'll get a different result. Let's go way down octaves and see what we get. Okay, that's enough weird shit. I'll be back when I have something a bit more interesting to show you. <laughs> a bit more well-conceived, if you will. Uh, I'll be right back with some stuff, I promise.
Here's a couple examples of me using the video input feature of the Hypno to process video. And there's a whole bunch of other controls you get access to when you change the oscillator shape to a video input, which becomes a new shape once you plug in a compliant device into the front USB port. So you get things like X and Y crop size and offset, you get aspect ratio, and you get uh, control over the Luma min and max, depending on how you uh, set things up. All this stuff is accessed by pressing both of the oscillator buttons at once, and uh, that opens up a new page of options that we just talked about. The, <laughs> the crazy thing about this is all of the other controls and oscillator functions work in this context. So you can mix and match shapes, you can, it, it, it kind of speaks for itself, honestly. There's a lot to play with here, and um, it's actually kind of ridiculous. But I mean, all silliness aside, I think that it's pretty clear that the applications for like live video and live performance stuff is pretty cool. Just keep in mind, there is a short delay in the feed from uh, the incoming camera to the Hypno and out again. It's it's doing its best. It's, it's trying real hard. So one of the really cool things you can do with this is send gate signals to the shape gate input. What that does is change the shape for each oscillator on a gate input. And when you're dealing with something like an ARP, you can get very, very animated stuff really quickly, which is really, really cool. So in this patch, I have the fractalizer on and it's just scrolling through shapes and also bouncing around based on some envelope modulation. This was another attempt at a spooky patch where I have LFOs modulating the mutator in the hydrosynth and I'm sending those LFOs out also to the Hypno. You have to be choosy here because you only have so many outputs from the Hydrosynth, so you sort of have to stack up outputs. This is one of the noisier feedback modes in the Hypno, but I think it looks really cool for this kind of stuff. Then I took the saturation all the way down and made the noise even crazier by feeding the oscillators back into each other and got this really trippy ass staticky glitch thing where the shapes come out of the glitch. the LFO is working there. I also like to set envelopes to the gain knob so that I can have patches come in and out as I press the keys. So you'll see that a lot in all my patches where the envelope of the synth is set to the gain of the hypno. Here's another ARP. This one has a sort of chord thing going on. You can definitely see the envelope working on the transfer mode there on the gain. And you can see that my gates are switching between different shapes. The thing I like about this one is that it ends up getting really feedbacky and fractal. You can see those fractals sort of like threatening to come through there at the end. The red there. We're going to bring those in a lot more in a second. Let's see if we can bring those in even more. I really, really like that look. All right, we're gonna slow this down a bit because I think it looks a lot cooler with everything slowed down. I slowed down the hydrosynth patch. Similar modulation going out, but everything is much slower, so things are going to pulse and fade a little bit more. Mm -hmm. 
So the crazy fractal stuff that's bleeding red in the background is basically feedback. And depending on how the foreground and background interact with each other, and depending on the gain mode, which is being modulated by envelopes and LFOs, that feedback comes in and just explodes in color, which I love. All right, on to the next one. This was another experiment in an ARP. The shape is being changed by the gate. And I have LFOs both modulating the patch of the audio, and I'm sending those out via the two mod outputs to modulate the hypno. This is going to be a little bit more interesting in a second once I add another LFO. Let's introduce that second LFO and bring things down a bit. So same ARP, but I've introduced a more complicated delay. And also another LFO modulating the sound itself, which is getting past a hypno as well. So the goal here is to find a relationship between the modulation of the patch from an audio perspective and the modulation of the patch from a video perspective. And then I chose another transfer mode and I found the coolest iteration of how this could work. This is where the shapes start putting each other out. And I love this so much. <laughs> it looks like it's like been hand animated and it's just so complicated and cool um, and feels really, really like it belongs with the audio patch. So I'm just gonna let this play out a bit because I think it's super, super cool. Okay, in this patch, instead of using an ARP, I'm hand playing everything. And I have sample and hold LFOs set to modulate the waves of all my oscillators in the hydra sense. So it's jumping around between wave shapes. Those same sample and hold oscillators are being sent out to the hypno. So I'm getting very stepped and crazy stuff. Then I set the sample and hold envelopes to also modulate the reverb and delay in the Hydra synth. So now things get even glitchier. <laughs> it's super cool. Okay, so this is the last patch that I'm gonna show off. And actually, what you're seeing from a video perspective is not what I recorded with the pad itself that you're hearing. And the reason is because I could never quite get the modulation worked out for this patch. Um, basically, the audio patch has three separate LFOs that are bringing in and out the three oscillators of the hydrosynth. 
And because the hydrosynth only has two modulation outs, I wasn't able to really get those to pin to the hypno in a way that I liked. So instead, what I'm showing you is a patch that just sort of like happened when I had everything unplugged from the, uh, from the hypno unit. And it was just absolutely beautiful. So I recorded it just like doing its own thing for a while. There is, I'm not touching it at all. It's just, this is what it's doing. So I'm gonna let this play a little bit more. I wanted to let you know that I do plan on doing a video with the Hypno with a more involved Yorak system. I'm just waiting for a couple things to come through so that I can do that. Um, it's uh, it's gonna be a challenge, but I'm excited about it. And I wanna show you what it looks like with more complicated um, Eurorack modulation, like with Pamela's new workout or with maths or something like that. Using the Hydrosynth to create visual patches was an absolute joy. And I would recommend the Hypno to anybody who is looking for a relatively low cost solution to create incredibly hypnotic and glitchy and cool visuals that will go along with your Eurorack system. There's nothing else like it right now on the market and I am in love. It's so, so cool. You'll be seeing a lot more of it in my videos. So with that, thank you so much for watching. My name is Jeremy, this is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day.